He hasn't been involved in the offense, and a lot of that has to do with Tennessee's pressure on the wings, making it difficult to not only receive, but to make entry passes. You take a look at Brian Williams down there trying to use that big body. I've always felt the first post defender is the man guarding the ball on the perimeter. Feet down to Ira Brown and a wrestle for the ball. Nice. And height felt able to save backward violation though. And with more on Josh Heitfeld, he was Andy. One of the key things for Heitfeld has been his maturity within the locker room and on the court. We saw this the other night when Micah Downs was almost going to get a technical from Ed Hightower. It was Josh Heitfeld that pulled Downs back, and he told me after the game the other night that that's his role, to make sure he calms everyone down and shows leadership on the court. Feed to Williams and the flush. That's the difference between the two teams right now. Gonzaga really doesn't pressure up on the basketball like they need to, and it becomes a very easy look over the top. Big Brian Williams really kind of having a coming out party in this tournament, not necessarily scoring, but throwing his weight around. At one point, that young man weighed 347 pounds. He's down to about 260 right now, and you can see they increase his mobility. Yeah, he's light on his feet. Brown steps in, gets a deflection, but Tab gets it back, and now. We mentioned Brown is a, a throwback to the old school Zags before they went national. Brown comes away with it. And now Pargo, they're two on three. Pargo to the goal and finishes. 6 2, 220 and a physical point guard. Well, you can say that about most of the guys out on the floor there that not only are they big, but they're thick as well. They take up a lot of room, and that width pays dividends for them going to the basket as well as rebounding. Take a look at this, guys. Here's what we were talking about, Len. You go ahead and write that. Take a look. No ball pressure, really. And that allows the ball to get over the top of Heitfeld. If you're Stephen Gray, you got to get out on Prince. And you got to become the first post defender and help your low post teammate out. And when you throw a lob like that, it's got to be pinpoint. They threw it to the corner of the backboard, which gives the receiver a lot of room to work. If you're getting the guy in your face, it's hard to see that. That last foul was on Brian Williams, his first. Gray, another triple. That one's off the mark. Robert Sacre has checked in, the seven footer from Canada for the Zags. 13 16 to go, first half. Gonzaga by three. And the two power conferences, including seven top 25 teams. Lay it on the line. The ACC Big Ten Challenge returns to ESPN. Starts Tuesday night, a doubleheader on ESPN. 7 Eastern, Ohio State and Miami. 9 Eastern, Duke and Purdue. The ACC Big Ten Challenge, ESPN on Tuesday. Fran, you and I will be in Champaign for Clemson and Illinois. Clemson already off to a very good start. Trevor Booker inside. Terrence Oglesby, the deep shooter. Williams spinning baseline, Prince the board, and the feed to Williams, couldn't get the finger roll to go. And it'll stay Tennessee basketball, Jim Burr over there, he got a timeout I believe. No, I think he just got it, what he did was he pointed in the wrong direction, John, because the uh, Chisholm was going out of bounds. Yeah, he got turned around a little bit, but he corrected the call, it's Gonzaga ball. But I'll, I'll tell you, Gonzaga may be tested today by the depth of Tennessee. Bruce Pearl has been substituting very liberally. And that's a great point. You know, he, he says, your five may be as good as my five, but are your ten as good as my ten? Back to the loose ball, and he'll stay with Gonzaga. And Bruce Pearl wants over the back. But I like this because Gonzaga, they, they need to know they're in a street fight. When you play Tennessee, you got to have all hands on deck, and I like the way Gonzaga has battled in the early going. Good call by the official. The same team out of bounds. Ira Brown. Wow. And the three is no good, and Brown fouls Brian Williams. And you talk about Brian Williams being big, and Ira Brown was a tank right there and just ran him over. Well, two of the elite coaches in college basketball meeting in this one. 
Mark Few number two, Bruce Pearl number three in active winning percentage. You know, as, as, a, as a former coach, I always tell Mark Few, you, you've got the best job in the country. He's got a great program. They can win their league every year. He loves this area. It's a familiar name. Ronaldo Woolridge, the son of former NBA player Orlando Woolridge. Oh! Ira Brown throwing it down as he just cut through the lane. He didn't need a pitcher's mound either, John. Absolutely not. I was going to say, that's a new weapon, a tank that flies. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> a neck ball. <laughs> a neck ball. Ira Brown got his fastball, the former minor league pitcher, throwing it down. Zags lead. Well, back here in the Old Spice Classic, good ball movement leads to this slam by Ira Brown. With authority. One of those guys you mentioned, he comes out of junior college after a minor league career. And, you know, going back to the er late 90s and, and early 2000s, he's like a throwback to the Zag guys. When you're a minor leaguer and you've been on those long bus rides, you kind of appreciate being part of the Zags program. And I'll tell you, the teammates absolutely love Ira Brown. And talking to them uh, two nights ago, Jeremy Pargo was saying, one of the things that impresses him the most is Ira Brown's strength. He claims he can bench press 400 pounds. He also claims that he once laid on his back and that Ira Brown did five push-ups. And Pargo's about 220, <laughs> and Brown is about 250. Well, that's pretty good right there. He is a big fella. They list him at 6'4", 235. And coming down that lane on that trail, <laughs> even Brian Williams didn't get in his way. Williams gets a piece right there. Tennessee the other way. And a feed to Woolridge, who's fouled by Sacre. Brian Williams making his presence known on the boards. Last year, 55 of his 115 total rebounds were off the offensive glass. He's got a good feel right here. Finds the open man. This guy did not play high school basketball. And this year he's got 33 rebounds and 10 of those are on the offensive side. So he knows how to get position, not afraid to clear out and go up and grab. Woolridge missing that free throw. The freshman from North Hollywood as Emmanuel Negadu checks in. I love this guy. Negadu runs the floor. Hard nosed guy. You know, I, I think early on, Gonzaga has matched the intensity of Tennessee, you know, punch for punch. But the question is, as Lenny mentioned, just, he just come, comes after you. They come after you with 10 guys. So in the gay dude play, he signed at Arizona. And was let out of his uh, scholarship, but I saw him play when he played for Nigeria's under-19 team a few years ago. Gray underneath and the foul. They're making toughness plays, Len, which I think you have to do when you play a team like Tennessee. Well, they're staying with it, and you get a nice block right here, surrounded by orange shirts, but then no follow up. And again, Gray's just hanging in there. You stay around the basket, good things will happen. But even, even though. They didn't get that bucket and Gray was able to recover. It sends a message though. The next time you come through, you can bet that the drivers for Gonzaga are going to be looking for the shot blocker. Well, Bobby Mays handling. He's got the lightning quick freshman, freshman Dimitri Goodson on him. Woolridge off the mark, but the rebound, Negadu. And the kick out and hit by Cameron Tatum, who was huge in the semifinal win over Georgetown. Five of six out of three in that game. Ira Brown has it knocked away. Negadu. And leads it ahead to Mays. Kick out Tatum. And Ira Brown pulls down the board. Talk about being huge. Tatum 17 points. We're in 16 minutes. 
Yeah. So he was instant offense. Well, ACC Big Ten Challenge continues Wednesday night, a doubleheader on ESPN, 7-15. It'll be Alpha Camino and Wake Forest going up against Indiana, the 9-15 North Carolina and Michigan State ACC Big Ten Challenge on ESPN on Wednesday. That North Carolina game will be at Ford Field, site of the uh, 2009 Final Four. And again, in the game today against Wichita State, Tom Izzo had to breathe a sigh of relief that his guys finally got it going in the second half. They allowed Wichita State to kind of draw them into that more controlled, scrambled, gritty game, but they were able to go and play as physical as they want to be as a Tom Izzo team did yeah. play and took control of that game. I get, I get the feeling that Tom Izzo knows his team. You know, they didn't, they didn't have Sutan today, and Kelvon Rowe is at 70% capacity. He probably knows a little more about his team after three days. But